let me do the first example. It, um, thin film of oil on water. So you have, I'm, I say thin, but I'm going to draw it big so that I can actually draw it. So example one, so thin film of oil on water. And this is the typical way a question might be worded. Uh, like on your homework question, maybe, <laughs> that I'm going to assign soon. Um, a question might say, so you have some oil slick, and as you are looking at it from above, you see that uh, there's a destructive interference um, happening for a particular wavelength. So let's say, oh, or constructive interference for a particular wavelength. Um, um, so let me word it this way. Um, so you s um, part A and B. Uh, for part A, let me say, as you are looking at it from above, you see uh, bright fringes, bright fringes for green color, let's say, wavelength of um, green. Uh, let me call it yellow. Yellow color, wavelength of about 500 nanometers. And the question could be, what is, what is minimum thickness of oil? Yeah. And part B could be, let's say, um, you see destructive interference, destructive interference for, um, let's say, blue wavelength. So maybe as you're looking at it, you see reddish color, so you assume blue wavelengths are getting um, canceled out, so wavelength of about 450 nanometers. Um, same question. What is the minimum thickness? Question seems clear enough, right? It's too well defined. Yes? Clear enough? OK. So uh, let me just go through um, analysis of this, and we will introduce any new rules that we need to use as we are going through it. But all of those new rules that I'm going to introduce, it will relate to the phase of the light that you are looking at. Um, some rules, it will be easy to understand. Uh, some other rules, for the, this lower division class, I just have to give it to you, and you just have to trust me. Because <laughs> it's something that's derived in upper division, and, um, and I, I don't know how, well, no time, and I, well, I don't have time to drive it in this class. And I probably take a while to figure it out, too. <laughs> anyway, so you have some light coming in. Let me just do it. Oh, let me actually do it in green, um, since that's the neutral color. So you are imagining this situation, layer, so air, oil, water. You have some light coming in. There's some reflecting from the top. Let me call this beam one. And it refracts through. There's some reflecting from the bottom. And let me call this uh, beam two. These two beams are interfering. That's what's leading to these patterns that are being described, similar to what you saw with the glass plate. So, um, so I, I guess this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that. Um, there's some um, reference phase that I'm going to say that's a zero, zero phase. And so because, you know, if you are looking at the phase of light arriving here, it's going to be constantly changing as it oscillates. So what I'm going to do is there is some sort of uh, neutral zero reference phase. That's what it would be if I had a beam that came in, went here, just turned around, came back, that's my reference phase zero. And I'm just going to account for any phase changes uh, from that. Yep. So let me account for phase changes for beam two. That's a little bit easier. And then we'll get to phase change for beam one. Um, so when you do phi two minus phi one, there'll be minus pi. Yep. 
So that's the correct expression for phase shift or phase difference between the two beams that accounts for all the all the things that you knew about, but maybe wasn't uh, paying attention to quite yet. And the new things that, um, so I guess this is uh, what I'm going to label as A. Um, new things that um, you didn't know before, frankly. Somebody had to tell you this. Um, in an upper division electrodynamics, you can actually drive this phase shift, but you know, this is not upper division electrodynamics. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's the relationship for phase shift. Then the rest of what you do is a matter of looking at the, the interference conditions. And since I'm looking for constructive interference, I would say um, the, the phase difference is going to be integer multiple of 2 pi. So say that this difference is equal to 2 pi n. And what I like to do is I prefer not to plug in a particular value of n until I have an expression for thickness. Once I have an expression for thickness, then I can figure out, OK, what value of n gives me the minimum thickness? Yes? Should the phi two have a factor two pi two pi multiply two t over lambda? Oh, you're right, 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 right. Um, so this is in the units of cycles. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, is that clear to everyone? Why this needs two pi? So this two t over wavelength, it's giving you the phase shift in the units of a fraction of a cycle. So if the twice the thickness is exactly the wavelength then it would have been 1. But in unit of radians, what I need is 2 pi, not 1. So what I need here is the whole thing times 2 pi. But thank you. Yeah, I kind of missed that. Um, so there should be a factor of 2 pi times all of this. Good. OK, so let me, um, well, let me de um, cancel out the pi's, because I think I can do without some of these pi's. So, um, cancel out this pi, pi, pi. Um, guess I'm going to solve for t. So I have minus 1, which I'm going to move over. So 2n plus 1. Uh, uh, let me solve for this first. So I have 2t over lambda over no is equal to 2n plus 1. Um, divided by 2. Everyone good so far? OK, and I need to solve for t. So multiply through by lambda over 2NO. So multiply through by lambda over 2NO. That would give me t. This will cancel out. Good? OK, so what value of n do I want if I want minimum thickness? Zero, right? Yeah, so that would be where um, this thickness is just enough so that this pi phase shift is exactly balanced out by this phase shift due to the additional length here. Yeah. So I put in, so um, looking at this, I put in the n equal to zero. And plug in the rest of the numbers. Since uh, I've, you know, I've been starting out with the numbers, let's just plug in and, and see. So with this zero, I, it's one half, so one fourth. It's uh, one fourth times the wavelength in air, 500 nanometers, divided by um, 1.5 or three halves. Um, three half. So it's a one over. 2 times 3, so 1 over 6. 500 divided by 6 would give me around uh, 8, uh, 83 nanometers or so. Good. Yeah, so that's the answer. So the minimum thickness that would give a bright fringe for green light, it's a pretty thin uh, thickness, I guess. Um, what? Um, anyone here know about CPU manufacturer processes? There used to be something called like 70 nanometer process. Is this 
It's smaller now, right? Do you know how small? 45. 45, okay. So in uh, semiconductor manufacturing, that's how small they are making things when they make, you know, your computer chips. Um, so anyway, so that's uh, the uh, minimum thickness. Uh, since we have almost everything set up, let me um, do this, um, do part B also. And here you will actually have to be a little bit careful. It's a matter of your interpretation of questions. So let me, um, let me set up what we have to do. So I'm going to erase this so that I can reuse what we had here and uh, take it from there. So let me erase all of this. Um, so have two pi back, pi back, two pi back. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. So it's this right-hand side that's going to change. So the expression for phase difference hasn't changed at all. What has changed is what we are looking for. Before, we are looking for constructive interference. Now we are looking for destructive interference. So we say, all right, so this is equal to 2n plus 1 times pi. As before, the pi factors cancel out. Um, so, um, so uh, let me do the uh, same solution as last time. Um, so um, divide it through by, or move this one over, divide this through by two. So uh, what I will have is 2t over lambda and O is equal to 2n plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 divided by 2 or n, n plus 1. And your limitation on n is that it has to be integer. Sorry, I started at 0, 1, 2, but it's 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. So what value of n do you want for minimum thickness? Now, negative one is an easy answer to give. And so this is where I want you to be a little bit careful. It sort of depends on the exact reading of the question. If you want to be super legalistic and literal, you do want the literal minimum thickness that would give you a destructive interference for this. But you know, it's a question of how do you know that there is a destructive interference for this wavelength? Is it because you see no light of that color or is it because you notice the other color more? Because let me ask you a different question. If n is equal to minus 1, um, does it matter what wavelength you have on whether that you, know, you are going to get destructive interference or not? Like you would get destructive interference for all wavelengths, right? And it makes a conceptual sense here, too. So if this thickness is very, very thin, so the beam two is not getting any more phase difference, then they start out at pi phase shift apart. So it's, if it's very thin, then we do, like it, it, the, the fact that you do get destructive interference doesn't depend on, um, doesn't depend on wavelength. So that would be the situation where you look at a very thin film of uh, oil and you see no light reflecting back because all wavelengths of light is getting canceled out. Yeah. So if that's what you're looking for, then sure. n is equal to minus 1, and your t is equal to 0. So now, if that's not the answer you are looking for, then that's where you have to reason, OK, we do want destructive interference for this, but we want for the other wavelengths, we don't want, the, want destructive interference. That's where you might make a judgment call and say, oh, n is probably 0. So that it's the next thickness. Instead of t equals 0, I actually want t equals um, you know, something else. So, so, um, so you know, that's the kind of reasoning that you might go through. And when you're done, <laughs> the end result is that you are plugging in 0 for this. So all of this is equal to 1. So when you solve it for t, this is what you end up with. t is equal to uh, lambda over 2 no. Lambda over 2 no. Oh, so that's the same wavelength I had except double that. So it should be something like 167 nanometer or so. Good. So 
Um, wait, 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 sorry, different wavelength. <laughs> I had to recalculate the number. <laughs> Too hasty. So it's uh, 450 nanometers divided by um, two times 1.5. Uh, well, so it's divided by three, so um, equal to 50, 150 nanometers. 